Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you whether or not a vitamin B12 deficiency could be causing your hair loss. Make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair Guard YouTube channel. On this channel, we do tons of science-backed videos all about how you can combat hair loss and regrow healthy hair. If you are new to the channel, do consider subscribing. If you're worried about your hair loss, you can click the link in the description to take the Hair Guard Hair Loss Quiz. You'll have to answer a few short questions, then you'll receive free expert advice on how to combat hair loss and regrow healthy hair. It's the very first link in the description, so go and click that now. So let's get into the video on vitamin B12. Now in this video, you're going to learn the truth about whether hair loss could be caused by a deficiency in the vitamin B12. First, I'll explain what the vitamin is and why it's important for your hair and overall health. Secondly, I'll show you why and how a deficiency can occur so you'll know if it's likely if you're deficient or not. Then finally, you'll learn what to do to make 100% sure you don't have a B12 deficiency so you can cross that off your list and see if your hair loss stops or start looking at other causes. Now, what is vitamin B12? Well, it's a B-complex vitamin that plays a critical role in most of the body processes. It's found naturally in animal products such as fish, poultry, eggs and dairy, and it's also added to many foods such as cereals and grains. Now, the role that it plays in the body. Well, perhaps B12's greatest contribution to the body is its role in cell metabolism, and that is the set of chemical reactions that maintain life. This function of cobalamin occurs through the, throughout the body, even within the hair follicle, and is necessary for the basic functioning of cells. This B-complex vitamin is a cofactor in DNA synthesis. It also assists in the metabolism of both fatty acids and amino acids and plays a major part in myelin synthesis. Last but not least, it contributes to the maturation of red blood cells within the bone marrow. But what about its role in hair? Well, there's no doubt that all of the processes mentioned above contribute to the health of the scalp and hair. However, researchers have also discovered a direct link between B12 and hair growth. In 2011, researchers from Moser Medical Group in Austria asked themselves, is there a way to reduce or even stop post-transplant effluvium in patients who undergo micrograft hair transplants? Well, the question came about due to the period of reduced hair growth that patients experience immediately following a micrograft transplant. This occurs due to uh, induction of telogen phase in transplanted hair follicles. So the question becomes, can B12 stop the transition to telogen phase? To answer this, researchers retrieved hair follicles from the occipital region of patients undergoing hair restoration surgery. The follicles were cultured for five days in a standard substrate along with vitamin B12. To determine efficacy, the researchers used two measures, the percentage change of hair shaft elongation and a real-time RT polymerase chain reaction which indicates induction of the WNT pathway. In terms of HSE, Hair follicles that were exposed to vitamin B12 showed a significant percent change between day 0 and 5, and this was true for both concentrations. In addition, the cultures exposed to B12 also showed the presence of a specific mRNA for the B-catenin. What does this all this mean for hair growth? Well, in terms of hair shaft elongation, this occurs as a result of anagen phase hair growth. Its presence in hair follicles that were cultured in B12 shows that this vitamin does at least slow the transition from anagen to catagen phase. As for the WNT pathway, that's a bit more complicated. In short, the WNT signaling pathway is a group of protein pathways that pass signals along to cells. They do this by connecting to the frizzled family receptor, which then sends a message to a disheveled protein within the cell. This process can induce numerous cell responses, but the one that hair loss sufferers should be concerned with is gene transcription. When the right genes are transcribed within the hair follicle, two major things take place. The anagen phase of the growth cycle is initiated and maintained, and the endogenous dermal progenitor cells are induced to differentiate into a hair bulge, leading to the formation of new hair follicles. Now back to B12. The results of this study showed that vitamin B12 activates WNT signaling within hair follicle cells, which leads to the above mentioned results. And guys, just before we go any further, vitamin B12 is actually a key ingredient in the Hair God supplement, which has actually taken more than five years to develop. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to leave a link for you in the description and you can go and check that out. Anyway, back to the video. Now, if B12 has been shown to be helpful in activating the WNT signaling pathway, it makes sense that a deficiency could lead to hair loss. The major reason is that even if other substances can activate the WNT pathway, B12 
B12 is crucial in cell replication and DNA synthesis. Without its presence, cells throughout the body would struggle to replicate. Within the hair follicle, this would mean stunted hair growth. In addition, it's needed in the development and maturation of red blood cells. If you're deficient in this vitamin, you may experience a specific type of anemia. Red blood cells deliver oxygen throughout the body, so a lack of them means less oxygen will be delivered to the scalp. As with any other organ, poor oxygen levels can cause the hair follicle to become weak and eventually die. To summarise, yes, it's absolutely possible for a deficiency in B12 to contribute to hair loss. Now, what are some symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency? Well, if you're concerned about meeting your nutritional needs, it's important to know which symptoms to look out for. This is especially true for B12, as a prolonged deficiency of this crucial B vitamin can lead to irreversible damage to the nervous system. The most common signs and symptoms of B12 deficiency are tiredness, weakness, loss of appetite, weight loss and constipation. You may also experience numbness and tingling of the extremities, but this may only occur in the later stages of a deficiency. If the deficiency is not corrected in a reasonable time, you'll also begin to experience nervous system symptoms. These include confusion or dementia, balance problems, depression and poor memory. If you experience any of the above symptoms, speak with your doctor immediately. Now, in terms of causes, the majority of individuals receive adequate amounts of vitamin B12 in their diets. The exceptions to this are the elderly, vegans and ovo-lacto-vegetarians. The problem for many then not lies in the consumption but in absorption. In other words, there are various factors that can make it difficult for your body to absorb the vitamin as it should. These include but are not limited to surgery that removes a section of the intestines or stomach, menopause, immune system disorders, drugs that lower the production of stomach acid for prolonged periods of time and chronic alcoholism. So how do you treat a vitamin B12 deficiency? If you suspect a deficiency or if it's been confirmed by a blood test, it's important to begin treatment immediately. There are only two ways to treat B12 deficiency, and that's by increasing your intake of B12 rich foods and by adding a B12 containing supplement to your routine. Vegans or vegetarians may particularly struggle to reach their daily requirement of B12, and in this case, a supplement is highly recommended. And let's say that you are suffering from hair loss caused by a B12 deficiency, how can you actually reverse it? Well, the first step will require proper intake of B12, both naturally and via dietary supplements. However, you can also stimulate the hair growth process by following the following tips. The first thing is scalp massages and exercises. Now, as mentioned, hair loss brought on by B12 deficiency can occur on multiple fronts. For example, oxygen deprivation to the hair follicle. To correct this, then, you'll need to increase blood flow to the scalp. How can you do this? With scalp massage and exercises. This was proven in a 2016 study which showed that massages can increase hair thickness by inducing stretching forces to dermal papilla cells. How do you perform it? Well, you use your thumb, middle finger and index finger. Then you move your fingers in a circular motion while gently applying pressure to the scalp. As you massage the side of your head, slowly move your hands up towards the crown and you'll move similarly towards the hairline and the temples and finally to the base of the scalp. You can backtrack to previously massaged areas of the scalp as long as you go along. This will ensure each area has gotten adequate attention and it's also quite relaxing. We recommend performing this for at least 10 minutes per day. Another option is microneedling. If you're looking to further increase blood flow to the scalp, which is beneficial for the hair follicles and hair growth, then you'll certainly want to consider microneedling. This is a therapeutic technique that uses microneedles to wound the scalp, which then leads to regeneration. Does this seem counterintuitive? Well, there's actually evidence that it can be effective in promoting hair growth. In fact, one study shows that microneedling, in addition to minoxidil, increases the positive effects of hair growth when compared to minoxidil alone. And here are the results from the study, and I'm going to explain those in more detail now. The members of the minoxidil plus microneedling group saw significant increases in hair count when compared to the minoxidil only group. Why is that? Well, an increase in blood circulation to the scalp is one major reason. This enables improved delivery of oxygen and nutrients to the follicles, which can then be used in the cycling of the hair growth process. Another study performed in 2016 found that additional factors may be at play. For example, it was shown that the activation of the WNT beta catenin signaling pathway took place in mice receiving microneedling therapy. This pathway is important for the initiation of hair development, but also for hair follicle regeneration. Another thing you can do is change your diet. If you've introduced B12 rich foods mentioned, then you may think that you'll be on your way for hair regrowth in no time. Unfortunately, it's not entirely true. There are various vitamins and nutrients that play a role in hair growth and the lack of any of them in your diet can contribute to hair loss. But even further, diet is more than just nutrients we gain from foods. 
The foods that we eat also have a greater impact in overall health, including blood alkalinity and even the presence of inflammation within the body. Well, what does this have to do with hair, hair health? Well, let's discuss alkalinity and acidity. The foods we eat leave behind an ash within the body once metabolized, and this ash is either alkaline or acidic. The foods themselves will determine the pH value of the ash. But why does this matter? Well, in cases of pattern bolding, an acidic environment provides 5 alpha reductase with the ability to function optimally. This is bad news for men and women with androgenetic alopecia because this will lead, uh, result in the production of DHT, believed to be largely responsible for pattern hair loss. This is why those with AGA or those who are susceptible to it should eat an alkaline diet. But what if you aren't suffering from pattern hair loss? Well, let's consider inflammation. Inflammation is a natural response of the immune system to injury, illness or foreign invasion. It can occur acutely or chronically. While you may feel fine, the foods that you eat have a chance of causing inflammation within the body. This will depend on various factors including food sensitivities and genetics. But either way, the presence of inflammation is no good for your body. So what can you do to fight back? Well, you can increase your intake of healthy fats and colourful vegetables and remove allergens from your diet. If inflammation was a problem, then you may see an improvement in your general health, which will benefit your hair. Now, hair loss occurs for a number of reasons and deficiencies as a cause are rare, but there are certainly diet changes that you can try that will make an overall difference to your hair health. DHT is well known as the hormone that plays the biggest role in pattern baldness because it causes hair follicle miniaturization. This is essentially a lack of blood supply to the follicle that stops it growing. If you are already deficient in nutrients or minerals needed to grow hair, then the hair follicle miniaturization process will be made worse by this, possibly leading to an increased rate of thinning and receding. Luckily, there are natural and holistic ways to decrease DHT sensitivity so that it won't cause the hair to fall out anymore. There are also ways to improve your diet in such a way that deficiencies, whether in macronutrients or vitamins, are no longer a problem. So guys, that's what we want to share with you on a vitamin B12 deficiency. Don't forget to click the link in the description to check out the Hair Guard Hair Loss Supplement. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.